All authority is an illusion. It doesn't exist. Let's go talk about it. So what does it mean, authority is an illusion? First, let's talk about what is authority. I did the easy thing, the stereotypical thing, and went online, looked up a bunch of definitions. So let's go over each one of them because there's something really important in each of these definitions. First, authority is defined as the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. Or a person or organization having power or control in a particular typically political or administrative sphere. Now already, I hope you're seeing a whole lot of power words here, but let's go on to another one. The essential meaning of authority is the power to give orders or make decisions, the power or right to direct or control someone or something. All right, a little bit more there. The right to control someone. Interesting, there's one more I wanna go over. Authority is the power to determine, adjudicate, or otherwise settle issues or disputes, jurisdiction, the right to control, command, or determine, a power or right that is delegated or given, or a person or body of persons in whom authority is vested as a governmental agency, usually authorities, persons having the legal power to make and enforce the law, semicolon, government. Okay. So those are probably widely accepted definitions. I'm sure that's probably what you think of when you think of authority. But we're going to kind of delve into this and explain why this concept of authority doesn't exist. It's an illusion. It's invalid. And it's entirely dependent upon your consent. Now, if there is no violation of consent, then you just have two individuals voluntarily interacting with each other. And so therefore, there is no authority involved. Two people have come to an agreement and nobody's consent has been violated. So this doesn't really fall under the category of authority. Now the idea of this comes from the fact that all individuals have autonomy, the ability to make their own decisions, their ability to live their own lives. And we often refer to this ability to make your own decisions and live your life as your rights, what individual rights that you have. This autonomy is absolutely critical in feeling like a human, a person, someone who's in control of their own life to as much a degree as possible. So let's take a step back and look at some of the things that I as an individual or you as an individual can choose to do. And these things are, I believe, relatively uncontroversial. I can choose what I want to eat. I can choose which car I want to buy. I can choose how I want to earn money or how to earn a living. I can choose who I want to speak to, what I want to say, what I want to believe, and I can also choose to defend myself if I'm attacked by someone. Now, I would think that most of these, that all of these would be pretty uncontroversial. I think you sitting there would be thinking, you know what, that all sounds very reasonable. Now, this means that other people right? Not just me. I mean, I made I statements there, but that applies to other people, right? You are able to make those similar choices. But now let's reverse it and see if it still makes any sense to have a concept of controlling how other people do. Do I have any right to tell you what you can eat? Do I have the ability to control what car you're allowed to buy? Do I get to choose how you earn money or make a living? Do I get to control who you're allowed to speak to, what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to believe? Am I allowed to tell you that you cannot defend yourself if you're being attacked? Much as I think the original set of items was uncontroversial, I would think that instinctually you are opposed to all of these. The idea that someone else has some kind of right to make all of those decisions for you I would, I would guess is making you internally rebel at this thought. This is exactly the essence of what autonomy is. The reason why there can be no valid authority because we all recognize the choices that we are allowed to make in our lives and we all instinctively reject the idea that other people get to make those choices for us. So let's take a quick look back 
at the definitions of authority and break down some of the words that they use in those definitions. Power, direct, control, command, determine. These are all words that indicate violations of individual autonomy, violations of your ability to consent to what is happening. So then beyond the definitions, what does authority really mean? What does it actually mean for someone to be an authority? What it ultimately comes down to is if someone in authority tells you to do something and you refuse to comply, what happens to you? Do you feel an internal sense of shame and guilt because you didn't do the right thing and recognize the error of your ways and voluntarily choose to do the right thing? Authority serves one purpose, which is to punish you for non-compliance. So if you don't do as you're told, they will ridicule you, they will steal money from you, they will potentially imprison you, hurt you, or even kill you for your lack of compliance. This is why ultimately there is no such thing as authority. There are only people who are willing to use violence and coercion to get people to do what they want and people who won't. Now, when this expands to systems of authority, the only difference is that there is a larger group of people that are willing to use violence and coercion against you should you refuse to comply. So we talked about earlier, and I think probably most of you agreed, that if someone attacks you, you have the right to defend yourself. If an individual that is an authority attacks you, in most cases, you are seen as having no right to defend yourself, which is based on only one thing. The fact that the authority has a larger group of their friends that are willing to come and help them do violence against you so that you have no ability to defend yourself. They are removing one of your fundamental rights to be able to protect yourselves when you're being personally attacked just because there are more of them willing to do violence to you. So given this, why do people defend the idea of authority so much and in many cases passionately assert that it's not possible to have a civilized society without some authority? You may be sitting there right now thinking, this sounds crazy. If you just have no authority, then people can do whatever they want. They can hurt people, they can steal, they can kill, they can just do whatever comes into their minds. This, you might think, is why we need authorities to help keep things peaceful and safe. The problem is that when you try to delegate some sort of rights or authority to a third party, it is at best redundant and at worst outright wrong and evil. Going back to one of our earlier examples, if I can't tell you what you're allowed to eat or what you have to eat, then what authority, what right do I have to tell someone else to delegate a third party to be an authority to tell you what you can eat? How can I delegate a right I don't have to someone else and somehow make that a valid authority over your decisions? Even if, say, I have a lot of friends and we all agree that you really need to eat this particular thing or not eat this other particular thing, if we all get together and say, hey, we took a vote and turns out we all agree. So therefore we have the authority to either use force against you if you don't obey or to delegate someone else to use force on our behalf because your obedience is absolutely critical to keeping things civilized. So ultimately there is no authority here. There is only at the end of the day, an individual who is willing to use violence force, coercion, a means to force you into compliance with whatever either they believe is the right thing for you to do or what other people who are paying their paychecks believe is the right thing to do. And there are no shortages of people in the world who are willing to accept a paycheck to force the views of others onto peaceful individuals. So then what is the solution here? If authority is invalid, if authority is an illusion, 
then does everybody just do whatever they want without consequences and it's just craziness in the streets and riots and theft and Mad Max all over the place? Of course not. As we talked about earlier, every individual, through their autonomy, has the ability to make their own choices as well as defend themselves from those who would violate their ability to live their own life peacefully and to make their own choices. So when I say that authority is at best redundant, what I'm pointing out is that the idea that you need some sort of special group or special set of rules or special authority to protect individuals from aggression from others, you don't need a special authority for that. Every individual and the people around them already naturally have that widely recognized right. If somebody tries to beat you up or kill you, nobody will argue that you have the right to defend yourself. Ultimately, that's true. So why do you need to create a specific institution that is allowed to do things that we're already widely accepted to be able to do? No one in our community is going to be upset with us for protecting ourselves from someone who is doing wrong. The only thing that authority really does is create the negative side of that, which is that things that people wouldn't otherwise consent to, things that aren't right, things that you wouldn't naturally be able to do on your own, become part of this protected class of individuals and this pr protected system that you aren't allowed to defend yourself against. So let's take an example. Let's say you're driving down the road and you pass me, and I'm driving in my car, you're driving in yours, and when you drive past me, I think, you know what? That person's driving faster than I like. I think they're being unsafe. I'm gonna chase them down, force them off the road, and make them give me money so that they learn a lesson that going that fast isn't safe, and they think twice before they ever do that again. Oh, and by the way, if they try not to stop, I have a gun, and I have a bunch of friends, and we will force you to stop, and we will make sure that you pay what we are owed, or else we will use force against you, we will throw you in a cage, or we will kill you if you try to resist. I would think all of you are like, well, that's ridiculous, you can't do that. Like, I can't just chase someone down on the road. At what point does a magic costume or some piece of paper written on by someone else's friends that says they have this authority, at what point does it suddenly become okay to do that to someone? I mean, the reality is it's not okay. The reality is, that there is no valid authority, there's no reason that can justify you using violence to enforce your will on others. So what's the alternative? If, let's not use collective terms like we, what if we all agree? What if an individual is at risk of being harmed by another individual? How do we keep ourselves safe? How do we possibly create this world where individuals are allowed to live their lives without being violently infringed upon by others without this system of authority and all these people that are around, allowed to go around and use violence to make everybody do what they're supposed to do. If you look around at the content on this channel and the content I will be putting out in the future, you'll see that I am advocating for the application of the non-aggression principle, the consistent philosophical application of the non-aggression principle, as well as non-violent communication. And the reason why these are good solutions is because with Without authority, without the concept of compliance with an authority figure, there are only two ways to get somebody to do what you want them to do. You can use violence, coercion, force to get them to do what you want, which is, I don't think anyone agrees that that is a good idea. Nobody wants to have that done to them. The second option is that you have to make a compelling and convincing argument. The core concept behind the rejection of authority is that if you have a good idea and you can't convince other people that it's a good idea, you either need to figure out how to formulate a more convincing argument so that people see that your idea is actually a useful and valid one, or you have to consider that maybe your idea isn't as good as you thought it was. So hopefully that is a good introduction to the idea of authority as being invalid. If you guys vehemently disagree with the things that I've said here, please feel free to leave comments. I always love outside input. This kind of dialogue, this ability to discuss and debate philosophical concepts such as whether or not 
any individual should be allowed to force other individuals to do what they want regardless of how many friends they have. I really want to have these discussions. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, please like, subscribe here to see more content like this. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one.